Thank you. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm Mike English, senior software developer at Ideas, um, and a member of the Media Over Quick Working Group at the ITF. Um, I took the train down from Seattle today, uh, from the working group meeting. So uh, what's my background? Why am I here talking about Media Over Quick? Um, started my career in uh, kind of a DevOps role at a software consultancy called Atomic Object. Um, from there, I went to Limelight, uh, CDN, that some of you are probably familiar with. Um, and that's where I kind of fell into the video world, um, first through uh, kind of traditional HTTP-based streaming and supporting services for that. Um, and then I got to put on a project uh, which was to basically replace uh, RTMP uh, with something else that could get video into the browser in less than a second, uh, which at the time there was basically one option, WebRTC. So, um, built a you know broadcast scale uh, platform for ultra low latency video delivery using WebRTC, uh, and learned the hard way that WebRTC is a great protocol. Um, but was not designed for one-to-many. Uh, it's great, great for conferencing, great for small groups. Um, there are some challenges with using it at a very large scale. Um, but uh, my interest in video took me then to Mux, um, where I worked on another WebRTC platform, um, built a, a platform with WebRTC for smaller groups um, that then uh, hooked into their live streaming service. Um, so you could have conferences and then record those, stream those out, um, and then have you know all their live to VOD capabilities there. Um, then uh, last summer, I had the opportunity to join the Recurse Center, um, which is a really cool program based in Brooklyn, um, where it's kind of like a, a self self directed. It's like a writers retreat for programmers, basically. Um, so you bring your own projects, whatever you want to work on, whatever you want to dig into, um, and you, you know, dig in. And so for me, uh, that was Media Over Quick, um, which I'll get into why, um, and Rust. Um, so I worked on a Media Over Quick implementation in Rust, um, and that led me to Ideas. Um, and Ideas, I know uh, Adrian and Steve were here before, they kind of talked about uh, what we do, and uh, Norsk, so I won't spend too much time on that. Um, but that's where I am now. So here's some background on Media Over Quick as a protocol. Um, why do we need a new protocol? Um, try and go through this relatively quickly. Here's kind of the, the a generalization of the current latency landscape in streaming. Um, and uh, I have to thank uh, Ali Began, I, I basically borrowed this slide directly from one of his recent talks, um, but it's a good representation of, of where things are today. Um, so you've got kind of traditional HTTP-based streaming, HLS or Dash, um, and then the typical case can be anywhere from 10 seconds on up. Um, so your live streams with, you know, moderate latency and, you know, VOD delivery, where the latency doesn't matter as much. Um, there's been interest in lowering that latency, particularly for sports, live events, um, interactive use cases, uh, and that's brought about innovations like LLDash and LLHLS, um, and also um, things like HASP um, are kind of in, in this space. Um, and then when you really need to get, uh, you know, sub-second latencies, basically you have WebRTC as an option. And like I said before, I have experience, you know, using that uh, for broadcast and using that for conferencing. It's really good at conferencing. Um, but it really wants to be pinned to like 100 milliseconds or less of latency. And if you try and stretch it up, you know, beyond that to get higher quality, you're kind of going against the grain of, of what the protocol was designed for. Um, it's really, really designed for real-time communication, conversational stuff. Uh, so there's this gap. There's a gap in this, in this continuum, as you can see. Um, and this is where things like, um, like Twitch-style streams, where you have like gaming and you have interaction with the chat, 
um, this, the, if you can kind of shrink that feedback loop between whoever's on the stream and you know, who they're interacting with, uh, that sometimes translates directly into dollars, depending on, on the business. Um, you know, there are auctions that work this way too. You've got you know, a live video stream and you've got chat, you've got some kind of interaction happening between the stream and the chat. Um, and right now, that's, it's hard to serve those use cases. Um, it's hard to get both you know, the quality that you want and uh, the latency that you want and the cost that you want. Um, so Media Over Quick is trying first to address this gap. Um, and I say first because we're designing this in a way because we have a chance to kind of have a clean slate and start fresh. Um, we're designing this to be flexible, uh, designing for flexible latencies um, so that you can decide what, what trade-offs you want to make in terms of quality, uh, in terms of you know how much of a jitter buffer do you want to keep? Are you okay with some rebuffering so long as you're delivering you know higher bit rate frames? Whatever it, people have all different needs, and right now the protocols constrain what you're able to do quite a bit. Um, so Media Over Quick is designed to give everyone a lot more flexibility um, with how they want to do their delivery, um, and it's also designed as a as an ingest protocol. So not only is it on kind of this distribution side. Um, but it's also a, a replacement for things like RTMP or, you know, people have been using WebRTC as an ingest protocol for low latency use cases now. So, you know, WIP and WEP, um, Media Over Quick is also usable for that. And so over time, uh, if, if we're successful in addressing this use case, um, I do expect to see that uh, Media Over Quick will eventually be able to cover this whole, s this whole gamut. Um, and it's hard to argue for adding a new protocol, um, but it's a little bit easier if you can say, well, we can take some things away too. Um, because everybody wants to simplify, everybody wants a simpler landscape. Um, and so if we can get to this world and we do it right, I think everyone's gonna be really excited about it. So uh, as I mentioned before, there's kind of the the interactivity uh, uh, dimension, and there's the scalability dimension. So um, originally, the rise of HTTP adaptive streaming um, came out of it being much more cost effective, right? So we had things like RTMP, we had Flash in the browser for a time, um, but you had to have a bunch of Flash media servers, and you had to have kind of like dedicated media server capacity. Um, and the advent of HTTP-based streaming meant these are just generic objects. You know, they can, they can sit in a cache somewhere, they can go through some kind of HTTP proxy server, and you can pay somebody to just provide that service as a generic delivery service. Um, and that brought the costs way down for delivery. Uh, so Media Over Quick is trying to take some of those, those lessons that we learned from using HTTP for delivery and apply them to lower latency use cases. Um, and kind of sit in this in this sweet spot where you can get both low latency and scalability. Um, so kind of the origins, uh, there was a working group at the ITF chartered in 2022. And uh, the birds of a feather group kind of brought together several drafts. Um, there was a draft called Rush from Facebook Meta. Um, and it was basically just describing something they're already doing. So they, they have a, a mobile app. They control both sides so they can kind of do what they want in between their mobile app and their servers. And so they actually use Quick already today for their live streaming. Um, and they said, okay, well, let's, let's write this down. Let's bring this to the ITF because maybe other people could benefit and maybe we could benefit from kind of having a, a standard here rather than just our own bespoke solution. Um, similarly, um, Luke Curley, had been doing some experiments at Twitch, um, tried some things with WebRTC, finally landed on Quick as being a possible solution, and he wrote up, wrote up a draft called Warp. Um, and uh, Cisco, the WebEx team, um, is also very interested in anything that can allow them to use generic fan out capacity um, and scale up 
things like WebEx conferences. So the quicker draft um, comes from those folks, and we basically took those all and merged them together um, into the Media Over Quick Working Group, and we now have a mock transport draft, and we have a catalog format draft, and we have a warp streaming format draft. Um, and so Will Law is kind of taking the lead on the streaming formats, and um, the primary focus right now is on that transport layer. So I'm gonna go over this quickly and we'll come back to this again. Um, but this is kind of uh, the protocol stack that we're talking about and where things are situated. So today, we have things like WebRTC, that gives you that, that low latency end of the spectrum, and we have things like HLS and Dash. And how those are implemented are kind of situated here. Um, so the primary media delivery mechanism for WebRTC is RTP. Um, and RTP sits directly on top of UDP. Um, in the, technically, it's SRTP, there's DTLS involved, um, but basically you're running on top of UDP and you have to figure out your own uh, solution for things like retransmissions, et cetera. RTP is one, one way of approaching that. Um, HLS and Dash take advantage of HTTP and take advantage of TCP for reliable delivery. And both UDP and TCP run on top of the internet protocol, uh, which runs on top of some kind of physical data link layer, whether that be Ethernet, Wi-Fi, carrier pigeon, whatever. Anything that can deliver a bunch of bytes, you can, you can put IP packets on it, and you're on the internet. Um, here's kind of where Media Over Quick is situated. Um, so you can see it's kind of on, t on top of a stack of things that includes Quick and runs on top of the UDP side of things. Um, and like I said, we'll come back to this in a minute. Um, but this is, this is kind of where we're situated. It's not the same thing as HTTP3, um, but it is running on top of Quick. Uh, so, as I said, Quick is implemented on top of UDP. Um, it's a new transport protocol. It's basically a successor to TCP, um, and it was introduced in, as a RFC in 2021. Um, originally, it was developed by Google, um, and they kind of brought the idea to the IETF, and then the IETF did what the IETF does and redesigned a lot of it, and now there's a, a new standard called Quick. Um, so it provides some of the features that uh, we know from TCP, like reliable delivery and ordered delivery, um, but it also provides some more flexibility and some new features uh, that we've come to expect in the modern world. Um, so uh, probably the, the key feature here for media is that Quick allows you to multiplex streams with independent logical streams which means that you don't have connection-wide head-of-line blocking. Um, so what that means is if you are waiting for acknowledgments on media that you've delivered on the wire, um, with TCP, if you're waiting on acknowledgments for any portion of anything that you've delivered, within that connection, the everything on that connection is blocked. You can't send anything down the wire at all. Um, with Quick, you can Independ you can have independent streams that are sending in parallel, and you can you know, be waiting for acknowledgments, maybe you need to do retransmission for packet loss on one of those streams, but if you have something that doesn't depend on the content in that stream, you can deliver that independently, and you can send it as soon as you want. Um, so you have kind of connection-wide congestion control, but the streams do not block each other in terms of delivery, and that's that's big, big for latency. Um, it also has um, some uh, capabilities for datagrams, um, similar to just using raw UDP, um, but Quick itself is encrypted. So everything that gets sent over Quick is encrypted um, because it's basically merged with TLS. So most HTTP traffic today is now HTTPS which means you have TCP and then you have TLS and then you have HTTP on top of that. Um, so Quick takes the TLS layer and makes that part of your transport protocol. 
So then you ju just run your application protocol on top of that and you already have all the handshaking, all the encryption, and you can save some round trips in doing the initial setup. So the other part of this is web, web transport. Um, so media over quick runs over either quick or web transport. Web transport is something pretty similar to web sockets. Um, so I don't know if you've used the WebSockets API much, but it's a, it's a W3C spec API, and uh, it gives you something like access to TCP in some limited capacity. Um, it's basically a, a socket. Um, but the way that you get it is this kind of goofy handshake with HTTP. You do like a, a, a connect, and then you, you upgrade your connection, and yeah. Web transport is a similar mechanism um, that provides you access to Quick in the browser. Um, so you can have you write your application in JavaScript and you can get direct access to Quick and take advantage of that stream multiplexing and all the other Quick features in a browser today. It's already available in Chrome, it's already available in Firefox. Apple's committed to implementing it in Safari. One of the main uh, Safari developers is like on the web transport working group, so like it's, it's coming, I, but they never commit to when, so I don't know when but it's coming. Um, key point here, uh, it's not necessarily supported out of the box by your HTTP servers and proxies. So web transport is kind of HTTP in the sense that like you initiate the connection with that special handshake, but similarly to WebSockets, it's not something that you're necessarily going to have out of the box with your HTTP3 server as something that it supports. Moving up the stack, Media over quick transport itself is the primary focus of the working group right now. It's designed to be very generic. And the idea here is basically to create a protocol that CDNs can implement so that you can have fan out capacity for very low latency delivery. Um, so it defines some control messages and kind of the abstractions for sending data. Uh, so right now we define that as objects, which is the kind of the smallest delivery unit available and those objects get collected together in groups. Uh, groups provide join points, so typically with video use cases, that maps to a GOP. So your GOP structure kind of maps onto the uh, transport level, and uh, you can do things like say, I would like to deliver a new group with every quick stream, or I would like to, every time I start a new group, I would like to start a new quick stream, which means I, I will always get the iframe before the P-frames that depend on it, but I don't need to wait on any segment that came before to start sending what I have now. So as soon as your encoder is producing the next group, you can start sending the next group down the wire, um, which is, again, key for low latency. Um, so yeah, the, the goal is to get this media over quick transport protocol kind of hashed out and done in as simple a way as possible so that CDNs can implement it generically. And it, doesn't need to only support uh, media video use cases, uh, there's a lot more. So uh, on top of the mock transport layer, we have streaming formats. And that's basically defining uh, things like your manifest format. Um, so we have something called a catalog, which is effectively the same as an HLS or a dash manifest, describes the tracks that are available, the codecs that are in use, how things are packaged, you know, how to, how to access the medium. Um, and you can have multiple streaming formats that all run on top of the same transport protocol. So again, the idea here is to have generic fan out capacity from CDNs so that everyone can take advantage of this low latency delivery mechanism and run whatever kind of media they want on top of it without tight coupling between particular codecs or manifest formats or anything like that. Um, you can kind of get the, the delivery that you want, um, whatever your use case is. And that can be, like I said, more than video. So there's a lot of demand for this that's coming now in kind of augmented reality, virtual reality, um, XR. Um, and there also, there's also interest um, in using it for things like game data, uh, where you have kind of low latency delivery to large groups. Um, but you can use it for anything. In fact, we have, in the working group, we have kind of a test application called Mock Chat. Um, it's, you know, a real-time chat application that runs on top of Mock Transport. 
So uh, right now, uh, Will Law has been working on a streaming format called Warp, um, and that defines you know, how to deliver uh, video content with uh, either CMAF, um, which is something we intend to maintain you know, support for in this Warp streaming format, um, or this new container format called um, LOC. Uh, and that's effectively just taking the, the web codex bitstream and using that as your packaging format, um, which is very convenient when you're in the browser, and it's fairly simple when you're not in the browser too. So um, it's nice because we can kind of leverage that registry to get access to whatever new codecs end up in the browsers, and it's it's pretty convenient. Um, but you can also do things like Dash. So at NAB, I demoed um, using a Dash manifest as a way to describe available tracks, um, and then you can you know subscribe to those tracks in uh, Media real quick. So I said we'd come back and, and here we are. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is kind of uh, comparing the, the current world where you've got you know, WebRTC and HLS and Dash and uh, media real quick. So as I mentioned before, web transport is kind of uh, web sockets like in the sense that it starts with an HTTP connection um, but then turns it into effectively a raw quick connection um, and media over quick transport can run over either raw quick or web transport connections. And by running over web transport connections, that means that you can access it and work with it directly in the browser. And importantly, because web transport is already in the browser today, that means you can start experimenting with this today. So the, the specification for this protocol is still in draft, but unlike other protocols where you need to wait for a browser to implement that thing, um, the, the raw materials are already available and people can play with this today. Um, so I have been working um, not only in the working group on the specification, um, but also on an implementation in Rust uh, with Luke Curley, and then I've been taking advantage of that open source uh, Rust implementation to integrate it directly with NORSC. Um, so NORSC, as I mentioned before, is kind of a, a live media workflow engine. Um, it, it does a lot of very cool stuff uh, with video. Um, but it basically has support for all, all the you know, input protocols and all the output protocols and all the processors that you might want. And then it gives you the mechanism to stitch those together uh, into fairly complex workflows. Um, and what I have been working on is uh, a mock output format. Um, I think I will skip the demo in the interest of time, um, but basically uh, this, uh, you, you can do things like have RTMP in and have media real quick come out now, um, or you can have WEP in and, or WIP in and media real quick come out. Um, and at NAB, one of the things I was doing is I had uh, both a mock output and a, a WebRTC WEP output for the same stream. Um, and because the um, mock output, the player I was using didn't have any jitter buffer, it was faster <laughs> than the WebRTC. Um, so it's, it's on that, that level of, of latency. Um, existing implementations already. Um, there are a number, a growing number of open source implementations. As I mentioned before, I've been working with Luke on this Rust implementation, MockRS. Um, there's also a JavaScript implementation that Luke has done, a JavaScript player that Jordi Sanzano at Meta has done, um, Google's um, Quiche team, which is kind of their uh, C++ quick implementation that they use on both the server side and in uh, Chromium, uh, now has a media over quick transport uh, implementation within it um, that Martin Duke and Victor Veslov have been working on. Um, uh, yeah, Mathis has a Go implementation. Um, Alan, one of the working group chairs, now has finally open sourced his uh, C++ relay server. That's a, so. Um, up until just a couple of days ago, um, Luke and I had the only relay implementation that was open source so far. But now there are two. Um, well, actually, Jordy's might be a full relay now. 
I think it was just a, a server at first, but it might be a full relay. But now we have more, we have multiple relay implementations that are open source. Um, and as I mentioned before, Norsk has uh, some experimental support. And since web transport exists in the browser today, anyone who wants to can start playing with this and experimenting. Um, as I mentioned before, I stole a slide basically directly from one of Ali's presentations. And uh, here's some, some further reading. So you can go to the IETF data tracker, find out about the working group, join the mailing list, um, get involved. Most of the discussion happens on either on the li mailing list or in GitHub discussions. And then we've been having um, weekly virtual interim calls, um, which are open. You know, the ITF is a standards body, but unlike some standards bodies, you don't need to be part of a company that is a member. Individuals are welcome. You show up, you have technical contributions, you have opinions, you know, this is gonna have bearing on your future potentially, and you, you wanna voice your opinion, show up, do so, now's the time. Um, because it's at in some point in the next year or two, things are going to you know gel, and we're going to have a spec, and it'll be too late. So if you're interested in what this looks like, uh, now is the time to get involved. Um, yeah, and so you can check out Quick.video for a couple open source implementations, Norsk.video if you want to know nor more about Norsk, um, and I've been collecting some other presentations about media real quick in a YouTube playlist there. Thanks. Any questions? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> last week in uh, Berlin, uh, Will Lowe said uh, talked about some of the headwinds for MOQ, and he said currently the uh, the server side implementation takes like twice the CPU resources to deliver the streams. So my question here is how fast can we expect this to come to the level of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the performance that we get from uh, HTTP delivery right now? That's a good question. Um, I will have to ask Will which experiment he's referencing there because I know that we did some looking at this, looking at Quick at least within the SVTA, um, but I'm not sure about the results. I have I have some questions about whether whether it's comparing uh, unencrypted. It might be encrypt encrypted versus unencrypted delivery, right? So if you're not doing TLS at all, that would have a pretty big impact. The other aspect is that um, quick libraries exist in application space, and uh, there are some benefits to that performance-wise, um, in that you don't need to cross the um, kernel boundary to uh, queue up data to send. And that means a couple things. That means um, you don't need to cross that boundary and pay that cost going back and forth, but it also means that you um, can prioritize things very last minute. So um, up until the last minute when, when things actually get put into UDP datagrams and end up in the kernel buffer to send out, um, you can re reprioritize your quick streams within your quick implementation that lives in user space. Um, so there are some advantages to that, um, but a lot of these things are, are much newer than, you know, TCP, which has been in the kernel for a very long time and had many years to get optimized. So those optimizations, I think, will come. Um, the other thing that's happening is, s I know Meta's working with, I think, Broadcom to get some um, like hardware offload support um, for Quick. So all of those types of optimizations are, are on their way. Um, but I don't know the timeline. I, I, I can't, I don't have a crystal ball, so. Makes sense, thanks Mike. Yeah. And then, you wanna close? So it's all about low latency and how you can scale with low latency because WebRTC today is deployed in all the browsers. It's ubiquitous. The problem is WIP doesn't have any scalability problem. It's all about the distribution part. Why aren't you focusing on to making a web to large scale delivery 
uh, resolution problem rather than doing something that starts from scratch, scratch again? Yeah, um, I think that there are some some fundamental differences. Um, so like uh, WIP and WEP uh, solve the signaling problem, um, which previously was the main, main problem with getting kind of generic distribution platforms in place, right? Yeah, yeah. So when, when we built the thing at Limelight, there was no such thing as WIP. And it was like, okay, well, you have to use our SDK to get your signal in. Um, or like, we would use a generic one, but there is no generic way to do yeah. signaling. Whip, so WIP is the generic yeah. one. Yeah, is, WIP is great now. Um, and you know, WEP, similarly on the distribution side, will be, will be good. That's not yet spec but people are, people are using early, early drafts already. Um, but uh, the way that WebRTC does delivery is fundamentally different than the way that um, HTTP streaming works. Well, it's not HTTP. That's the problem. You cannot use HTTP caches that are super cheap. You have to re-implement something. Exactly. So you need, on the, on the distribution path, you need dedicated WebRTC, SFUs, or MCUs, mm -hmm. you know, some kind of fan out capacity that only does WebRTC, that doesn't do other forms of delivery. And that okay, means you're so de dedicating yeah, those Your argument resources. is you can do whatever you want over quick, and by the way, you can also do media, but once you have a quick infrastructure for caching, you can use for any, anything. Right. right. And yeah, the, the, there are other things about how you know, WebRTC handles, um, the way that WebRTC achieves the latency uh, targets that it has um, for conferencing is that it, it balances quality differently and it balances things like op sizes differently. So typically for WebRTC delivery you have, or WebRTC, you know, uh, you know sending media, uh, you have kind of open GOPs or very long GOPs, but then every time somebody joins a conference or every time somebody loses too much media, they can send a PLI and, and it, that goes all the way back to the encoder to get you a new keyframe, uh, which is great for conferencing. But again, that's not something that you can fan out to, you know, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, you know, watching some, some sports broadcast or something, right? Like, um, you, can, you can do some tricks to coalesce those and things, but again, you're kind of like working against an already very complex protocol that's designed to do RTC really well. Um, and you're, you're kind of turning it into something else. So we have some things that are kind of unpacking, like especially on the browser side, WebRTC is being unpacked. Um, it, it kind of became a black box implementation um, with kind of like, you have these APIs that you can kind of say, I'd like to set up a peer connection, whatever. Um, but what happens there, you, you don't have much control over tuning it. That's starting to change now. And, some, and things like web codecs are an example of like, we're, we're teasing this apart. And things like insertable streams, the insertable streams API, we're starting to unbundle some of the stuff that had been kind of put together in this black box of WebRTC. And this is kind of where, where Media Real Quick picks up and says, okay, now that we've got some of these pieces that we need outside of the WebRTC box, we can do other things at the transport layer and we can build you know, more customized applications on top of this rather than just you know, trying to force WebRTC to be something that it's, it's not. So it, it can be done. You could, like, people are actively scaling up WebRTC distribution, you know, mechanisms. Um, yep. Yeah, as I mentioned, I, I, yeah. Yep. I've done that. <laughs> so I know, I know it can be done. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.